If these walls could talk, they would speak volumes. Even though time has already stopped ticking nearly a decade ago, the legacy of Mr. and Mrs. Miloun, an artistic Belgian couple, will never be forgotten, as today we share their magical home with the world. Get lost in the imagination and skill of these two artists as we wander around and explore what's left of these two creative souls. Wow, where did I just step into? This place is a masterpiece. And today I'm gonna to tell you a story of a very artistic Belgian couple. So these people actually were very, very artistic. And today I'm exploring the aftermath of their lives of two Belgian artists who exclusively devoted themselves to their passion for art. It seems that these people actually had a pretty basic life, but they wanted to feel how it would be to live in a majestic place. There is so much wall paintings, so much art, and it seems that this was not only their home, but also the place where they would express themselves and decor all their fascinating artwork. This place actually reminds me of one place we have visited before in Italy. It was the fairy tale house of Alice and Nelly. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out in the top right corner over there. But today I'm gonna explore the Belgian version of it. And I'm very excited, I can't wait. Let's show you a magical tale inside of their passionate life. Let's go. So I will tease you a little bit. We first gonna start off in the part where we actually just came inside. And this was like a little part leading to the garden. There is also a garage, but unfortunately no car left behind. And over here it already starts. So, so cozy and also so magical. This place is literally like a fairy tale. Over there the tiny statue. And over here we can see the paintings they actually made. And have a look at the sink too. Some wonderful porcelain tiles over here. The sponge, the brushes. Wow. So this place is already abandoned since 2008. And this is one of those places which I find really a shame that nobody is saving it or doing anything with it. Over here, a painting of a fisherman. Some tiny figurines. Also this dog is from a Belgian cartoon called Samsung and Gert. And this is the dog of the cartoon. Or cartoon is actually a television program for children. And actually all is carved inside of the stone walls. Wow. 
it's literally like I'm inside of a cave, a dreamy fairy tale cave. Over here, the clock saying the famous quote Tempest Vergeet. Also, look at the wonderful natural ivy just growing inside. Also, the leaves are laying here. This is actually the perfect place now to explore during autumn time. The roof is pretty typical, it's like these panels. And then have a look. We are continuing inside of this dreamy cave. Oh, I love to explore this place, guys, and share it today with all of you. I'm so excited, and this is a must-see, I think, for everyone. It's one of the most unique places I've ever, ever seen in my exploring career. So over here, a couple had a tiny ballroom. Just enough to do everything they needed. The toilet paper is also still hanging up here. And the name of this family actually was Milun. It's almost like melon if you translate it from Dutch to English. These people were Flemish, so they also taught sort of a Dutch language. And this is all stone and this is all just carved out by them. Imagine this was the entrance of the garden to the rest of their home and to the living. It's so impressive how this was made. Literally all we see in this house is what they made throughout their complete lifetime. It's very, very impressive and I have much admiration for this artistic Belgian couple, Milun. Wow. Look at the paintings they have made. This looks like it's in a church or a cathedral. This place absolutely makes me speechless. <laughs> so over here are some old letters. And indeed we can see the family name Milun and also Geisel. So that was maybe the woman's name. This is empty over here. Here in the box is an electric carving knife. But furthermore, this is also just empty. There is a tiny heater here standing on the ground, but that's far it. You can already see the curtains. And this was normally leading to a kitchen, but as you can see, they placed the cabinet in front of it and it's completely barricaded. I should also not forget to point out the beautiful porcelain tiles again on the ground with the star pattern. And they are so colorful. It must have been a magic tale to actually live inside of this place. I can not, Im not imagine that this place was actually someone's home. It more feels like I'm just walking in an artistic museum. <laughs> so I will just pan out the wall paintings more details from a closer perspective. And it's actually very, very neatly done. Over here we can also see a name. Maybe it was one of the artists who made it. M-O-R-T. Looks like this was a mermaid sitting on a stone. So from there we actually come inside of their shed. And you have to wait for the fairy tale living room. I'm gonna tease you a little bit. We're gonna slowly build up the tangent. Over here is a home trainer. That's actually an item we often find in these old Belgium homes. Over here they had their cabinet with some beer glasses. All Belgian beers. The Koning. Over here is also still some mugs and glasses standing inside. A bottle of champagne. This used to be for flour and underneath it respectively sugar, it is saying.
This used to be filled with rice. Over here it's actually empty. Over here still some china plates. Their laundry is also still in this bag over here. Why oh why? It actually looks to me that we found actually like a lot of things indicating that this couple was actually of an older age. So I think sadly enough one day one of them was the last one to remain, passed away and ever since nobody actually decided to buy their home. Because what I've heard from the stories is that they actually were trying to sell it but nobody wants to buy it and they cannot find any buyers. Very hard to imagine but at the same time I think the art is very personal and that's maybe the fact that not many people would actually feel this as a home but more something from someone else. The brooming kit over here probably from Mrs. Milun. Also look over here, a very old fashioned tape recorder from Telefunken, a German brand. There are still some tapes inside, this one completely flattered out. Oh and over here is still some perfume inside. Well, looks like this was definitely a little corner for the woman. The rooming kit, maybe she liked to listen to music or record certain things and some perfume. This was storage of her, mainly at least. Maybe the home trainer was supposed to be from the man because he wanted to stay fit and healthy. Well, and as many Belgian people in the 19th century, a crucifix. Many Belgian people are still nowadays Roman Catholic. There is still a strong religious belief, but it's getting less and less throughout the years. Let's go up here. There is a tiny attic part. Oh, wow. Another crucifix over there with Jesus Christ. There is also a chest. Let's see. Nope, there is nothing inside and I don't want to demolish the painting over there. It seems that there is some very old stuff here. Oh. There is a newspaper from Saturday and Sunday the 31st of May 1959. Looks indeed like a very old fashioned newspaper, a vintage one. Also a quite old uh, vacuum cleaner over here from the band Goblin or Goblin if it's French. And just the parts underneath the roof here. They might even have animals here, I don't know. Or maybe this was just to collect the leaves from some loosened roof panels. Okay, let's go back down again. I'm not gonna wait you guys for any longer because right now we're going to their magical living room. Let's go. So when I opened this door, I could really not believe my eyes with what I saw. Please prepare yourself for the moment I opened this door over here, because it's truly surreal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I keep being speechless. Like I said in the introduction, it's a true masterpiece. It's 
absolutely unique. One of the most unique living rooms I've ever, ever seen. And still in such a great condition. You can tell that the leaves are growing inside. Again, the same roof panels over here. Autumn is taking this place over. Maria statue over there. I'm just gonna start off over here. We can immediately see a wonderful painting. There's multiple people being displayed there in the tree. And look over here at all the gnomes. Wow, again in a rock structure. Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> also, please notice the door I just opened. It's actually like a hidden door. It was also painted. And if I close it now, you can tell it's actually so well hidden. Also completely painted again. Over here we can see Laurel and Hardy. I think most people know them. The fat one and the thin one. <laughs> That's how we actually call them in the Netherlands. It's very impressive that this is no wood, but no, this is all just carved stone. It's literally like solid material. Each wall is telling a different story. This looks like a very long time ago. Again, a woman, I look like she's praying over here in front of the crucifix. They try to make a little forest theme, I guess, that this were like trunks. A little bit of moss on top of them. Oh guys, I literally don't know where to look. One thing for sure, I'm gonna show you everything slowly, so you're able to see the essence of their passionate lifestyle as an artist. Over here is actually some fruits painted, some flowers over there. Also look at the sofa, it's actually like a team which has a little bit of camouflage, like leaves, which perfectly fits the interior of this room. And then over here, a wonderful German piano from Steinbach. And if they were playing the piano, actually overlooking the other hall of a cathedral and just dreaming away in their music and dreaming away like they were sitting in a church or a very majestic palace. The last leaves also still laying on the keys. Nature is reclaiming this wonderful place of them. still working pretty pretty well for such a long time of abandonment already. 12 years can actually do a lot with a place. You can tell over here, sadly enough, just through the center of their artwork here in the wall, there is a big crack already. There is also a photo over here of a boy. Maybe they had a grandson. And actually, this is like three-dimensional. This is not just one-dimensional, no, it is like different layers. And they carve the trees out perfectly detailed. You can tell by it now, look. It's all just carved out on different levels and thickness. Have a look at the sofa here too. <laughs> I really, really love this place. So on this side of the walls, it's mostly like a forest team they were trying to display and express in their artwork. And also look on top, by the way. Not only the lamp, but also over there, completely high up, 
They also painted like a forest with trees and the sun. They actually had a ladder they needed to go on top of there and actually paint everything there. Imagine that. There are still also their plays and mugs standing here in the middle of the table. I can't believe it. There's still some cassette records here, probably for the Telefunken radio we found in the shed. Where is some flower artwork? A tiny crocodile is actually a souvenir from Florida in the States. So they probably also like to travel and in that way they maybe had inspiration for their artwork with the impressions they got. What a surreal place. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. I never even expected that a place like this would exist in Belgium. But when I saw it, I had to go here as soon as I could. Because believe me, this is a one of a kind. And I will think I will never see something like this again. Also look over here. Like a tiny house with a mill. Maybe it served as a bakery in the middle of the mountains. Over here they definitely try to imply a tree in the theme of the interior. Some tiny figurines again and over here they actually made a replica of a very famous painting and this is one of the most famous artworks from the Expressionism a certain time period in art history which probably many viewers know the clock over there is painted too And please also notice over here how they try to make like a woo team or something. And it actually looks very, very realistic. Over here a record player with a walking cane right next to it. So that's already a sign that the person was probably of an older age. And then to give you another overview of this complete room. <laughs> It's absolutely mesmerizing to look at and I can stare at everything for hours and hours. Just imagining the couple, Milun, sitting here at the table, maybe the man playing a nice song for the woman and the woman actually serving out their meals in the middle of the table. And they were just dreaming away in their train of thoughts and in the creativity they all put, the love they all put in their wonderful art decor and their gallery which is just displayed in the living room. So let's continue and over here you can already see sadly enough that the ceiling is starting to fall down. This will actually lead us through the main hallway with the staircase. The bust is obviously not collected anymore. It's all just laying on the ground here. Or where they could hang up their coats or an umbrella, like you clearly can see. And then this was actually the main stair hall. With some typical Belgium carpets. But well, I'm gonna save the upstairs for later. I first want to pan out this room over here. So over here, again, many records and cassette tapes. There is another vacuum cleaner, but this one is rather modern. And over here, actually some chairs, and those ones are definitely for the elderly with a toilet down beneath it. Where there is another one. You can see where the droppings were collected. I think it speaks for itself. 
So this was another living and this was just like a normal homely living like probably everybody knows it. With some very unique chairs and a sofa again. Similar to the sofa which was standing in their artistic room. I think the artistic room was actually also used as a dining room which is a room to dream away and relax. Everywhere is artwork throughout the home. Curtains over here. And look at this wonderful chandelier. A little one. Very blinky. There is a wonderful fireplace over here. However, it was not functional, but it has some very neat wooden carvings with actually lions in it. Also a television from the years 2000 approximately, maybe around 2005 from Philips. Remote controls, DVD player down beneath it. And over here is actually an electric organ. Oh, we've seen a bottle like this before, made out of a tree trunk. It's actually perfectly matching their interior. Looks like this is in Austria, Switzerland. Maybe another souvenir from their travels. When electricity was still working, this one was definitely still transmitting. I do think it still works. But electricity is not working in this place anymore. Unlike many other places we've seen in Belgium where it was actually still transmitting. So over there is my camera back, if you were wondering what it is. And then this actually leads us to their kitchen. Actually a quiet plain kitchen with some very cozy curtains over there. Teapot standing here. Little swan. These cabinets are emptied out. It's strange that some places and things have actually been emptied out, but some are just still completely stuffed like the art room, where there are still many details. And I'm talking about details. Look over here again, a wonderful painting with some carvings on top of this other fireplace, which used to be a fairly big one. Just a standard kitchen over here. A coffee machine, a boiler. Over there is still some mugs. Oh, and also over here, still completely filled. Wow, the plates. It's so untouched, unbelievable. This place is a true abandoned gem, people. I love to explore places like this in Belgium. And when I started, we actually filmed a lot of unique places in Belgium. But at a certain point, I had a feeling that there was nothing left anymore, like really, really interesting places to see here. And then I saw photos of this place. And like I told you, I had to go ASAP. All their cutlery still inside. Probably over here some cleaning products. Yeah, right underneath the sink. Let's see if the water is still running. Nope, it's turned off. And actually there in the corner, there is a little door. And that's actually leading to a basement. Oh. But I'm afraid I cannot go far in the basement because it's completely floated. What a shame. Completely filled with water. Nope, you can see the boiler over there. Still things there laying in the plank and the rest is probably already sank through the water and will never be rescued again.
Okay, so let's go upstairs. I'm super excited to show you the rest. Of course, you have already seen actually the essence of this home, which was their art gallery where they displayed everything. But the rooms over here are also absolutely amazing. There are some very cosy, typical Belgian bedrooms. Right behind me, you can see some beautiful stainless glass here. It's, they definitely wanted to do something special with their home. And that's where I really, really adore and absolutely appreciate as an explorer. So here I'm standing on the second floor. And actually right over here on my right hand side, there is a vintage single sewing machine still with its original wooden cover. Also still some sewing wires right next to it. Like they were planning to sew something, but actually never finished. And also you had some compartments over here with a lot of other sewing tools and equipment. I want to check out if this one is still working. Oh, look at this. The wheel is still spinning. However, it's not connected well with the sewing machine over here anymore because that one is not moving. But it's still somehow transmitting. And that's absolutely unique to find. Now let's show you the other rooms. So actually a wonderful staircase. And this is just one of those typical 19th century Belgium homes, which I just missed exploring. A tiny artifact here of a reindeer with some cowbells. <laughs> when I hear it, I actually get a throwback feeling to Switzerland. You hear these cowbells all the time when you were just out there in the nature. We are a wonderful bedroom and for the first time we can actually capture an image of the Belgian couple. Right over here they are, the family Milun, a man and a woman, the man with a typical moustache and the woman just next to him, dreaming away with a book. You know, guys, I would literally put my hand into a fire to be able to drink a cup of coffee with these people and just talk about life, to get to know them better and actually know how their life was like back in the days here. Unfortunately, these two beautiful individuals already passed away more than a decade ago. But what I would have loved to meet them and just have conversations with them about their life. Unfortunately, the only thing which is left for me now is just my imagination and their home. It's the only way to picture how their life must have been. We can see another old photo of them here. Wow. Over here they could hang up some coats. And the front actually some trousers or jeans. Typical Belgian vanity, especially also the shape of this mirror. This is all empty dots. Let's see if there are still some clothes in the wardrobe. Nope, it's also completely empty. Actually, I'm happy to see that, that the clothes are just not going to waste. This looks like some art they also made. Maybe this was for somebody they knew. Concerning the candle and the book, maybe even this little boy passed away. Of course, I don't know. But if that's the case, it's utterly sad. And I want to send my deepest condolences. I also really like these little cabinets next to the bed. They look quite retro. And over here we can see a wedding photo. Wow. <laughs> they looked happily in love. Just seriously thinking about life. 
and about their love. And it was an everlasting love until the last years of life, until the home is gloomily left now and waiting for any new buyers to rescue this artistic gem of this very, very talented couple. And actually a quite modern vanity. Even with a sink. Television, you can see some slight spores of black mold on the wall, but not very advanced. A sofa in the same style as the sofa which we found downstairs. And I think this was a bed heater. This might have been the main bedroom of the couple. In that case, maybe they had a grandson just coming over in the weekends. Over here, another tiny room of which I cannot really relate what it was. Because I think they used to stand a bed over here, but it's gone. There is a television in the corner. And there is many tiny paintings. It's saying yay geysels. So that's from the woman. She actually made this one, this painting with the sheep. And I think all the paintings over here were just handmade by them. Calendar date here says 1993. And this wardrobe is emptied out again. Now let's go to the final floor in this mesmerizing Belgium home, which was a true pleasure to explore. We have all the shoes and the pumps from the woman still here in the boxes. And then there is the attic. Whoa. Wow. There is so much very, very old stuff here. Have a look. Okay, you're really gonna like the attic part. Because there are some very historic things here. Over here, some DVDs. There's actually an old photo of two childs. What is this over here? Looks like a chest with a electricity generator or something with light bulbs inside. I've never seen this. Maybe here is a switch to put it on. There are some very antique things here. Let's check out the newspaper. No way! It's from 1925 the 31st of October. That's nearly a century ago. There is a lot of noise from the street because this place is actually just located in the middle of a town. Another old photo. Also many prints and cartoons which have been cut out out of newspapers and then this I absolutely admire it's like a complete gallery of all their family ancestors a woman over here another woman over here she's looking very grumpy and serious like she had to pose in this way from the photographer it almost looks she was forced to this might have been a mother and father of Mr. 
or Mrs. Milun. I always love to look at these old portraits. They never actually get old. That's the beautiful thing. And how they made them back then, they never make them like this anymore nowadays. Look at this carriage over here. Also some very old magazines, 1959 is this one, 1964, very impressive seeing these vintage magazines. And then even on the attic parts they actually implied tree trunks, like they had something with nature, they must have loved nature and they also mostly painted about nature. That's definitely where their artwork mostly focused on. There were some children toys over here. Again a crucifix with Jesus Christ. So many old newspapers and files. Over here in the attic also. The Christmas tree they actually stored for the holiday seasons card playing game right underneath my feet then look over here wow Roman Catholic statues you mostly only find this in Belgium and that's what I love about Belgium just the integrity of some of these places how they are well kept and preserved during the years showing the importance of religion back in those days and I'm very sorry about the noise people, but I can't help it. It's just a very busy street where this is located. I just hope you can all hear me well. And I do think so. Because thanks to our loyal Patreon supporters, we were actually able to invest in some proper microphones so you can hear our voices clearer during the exploration. Thank you for all the people again who have been donating and becoming a Patreon. You are truly appreciated and you are a big help to the channel. And then lastly, in this place I will probably never forget because this was for me really one of the books. There is something I absolutely love, probably finding the most in Belgium. And that's right over here. It's almost forgotten in the corner. The very old Belgian prams, Australis. Wow, this one reminds me of one we found before in Belgium. They are very, very old. You barely see them like this anymore nowadays, in this shape, in this condition. Wow, I just love it. I can stare to a pram like this for hours and hours. The wheels are gone, unfortunately, and will probably never be used again. What a shame, it should be restored. So unfortunately something went wrong with the outro video the video file tended to be corrupt so now I have to do my outro here in my own garden during times of self-isolation I hope everyone is staying safe and staying sane this place was one for the books for me I will never ever forget and then if I'm standing here I want to take my time to thank all the people who have been donating us on PayPal big thanks to Cornelia Antonia Wijsman Lois Hansen, Ben Stevens, Frank Vannes, Diana Kessler, Velma Vallis, Melissa Mora and our dearest friend Willie Egger. You've been supporting us but also of course big thanks to all the Patreon supporters. They will be uh, credited in the outro screen as normally. And then if you like this video please tell all your friends and family about this video and our channel. 
to help us reach the next goal of 100,000 subscribers before Christmas time. Of course, also hit the big like button, subscribe to the channel down below and leave your thoughts in the comment section right down below. And then I send you much love, peace and blessings from my hometown and we will see you on our next adventure. Peace out and bye bye.